Hello, Shalom. So we're going to continue with the Simchat Torah. And we were speaking about the duration of this particular um, Moedim, or rather celebration, the celebration of the Simchat Torah, or the rejoicing, the joy of the Torah, the joy or rejoicing in the law that we call, according to Bamarinya, and in the Gittes, let's look here again, we call it Ye Orit Desita. Ye Orit Desita. Or of the Orit Desita, the happiness or joy or rejoicing of the Orit, the Torah. And in the Gittes, the more Gittes construct or construction is the Fisha, the Fisha, the Fisha Orit or the Fisaha Orit, which is the Gittes construction. Now, in our study, let's just uh, bring this down. In our, in our study of this particular um, word, the Simcha, the Simcha, we have a very um, interesting um, scriptural, um, in the Met Af Kedus of Negus and Neges, and as we said, we're going to update, we hope to update our Sabbath house reading to reflect um, some of the updates concerning scriptures, key words, holy days, and other information. So please be patient and also study. Study on your own. There's a lot of information out there. And what we're touching on right here is some of the basics. Now, as far as the duration of this holy day is concerned, as we were mentioning in Israel, the state of Israel, the Shemeni Atzeret, which is Shemeni, the eighth, speaking of the eighth day, and the Atzeret is the assembly, the general, one can say the general assembly or the assembly of the eighth day. And the eighth day is the conclusion of the Sukkot, or the Sukkot, Sukkot, which is plural of Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, in the state of Israel, the Shemeni Atzeret and the Simchat Torah, or the Simchat Torah, the Simchat Torah, or the Simchat Torah, are celebrated on the same day. Now, in Reform Jewish congregations, and, and not even in Israel, may also do likewise. So some choose to have both the eighth day and the Simchat Torah. Now, for us, as the Beit Israel and Let Rastafari, the next Shabbat, after the eighth day, after the Shemeni Atzeret, the next Sabbath, or Shabbat day, should be the Simchat Torah. Because of the particular Torah portion, the ending, as well as the beginning, and since it's the Torah portion, and it's not a particular holy day, so this is when we will um, choose to celebrate the joy of the Torah. Now, that being said, let's move on to two other aspects, the evening festivities. Now, the Simchat Torah festivities begin with what's known as the evening, the evening service. Because if you read and study, um, such as uh, Leviticus and the law, concerning the holy days and the celebration, they begin in the evening, the evening and the morning is one day, and we have that from Genesis 1. That's a basic principle. These are some of the first principles. So the evening service, all the synagogue Torah scrolls are removed from the ark and are carried around the sanctuary in a series of seven hakafot, what they know in the Hebrew as the hakafot, and the hakafot is the circuits. So there are seven circuits. So all the scriptures, all the Torah scrolls and portions are carried in these seven circuits within the synagogue or for us within the church or the gathering, the Beta Aras 
Tesari. Now, although each Hakafa, individually singular is Hakafa and plural is Hakafot, need only encompass one circuit around the synagogue, the dancing and the singing with the Torah often continues for much longer and may overflow from the synagogue or the gathering into the outside and into the streets. And there's some very interesting um, examples of this that we have seen before, and I'm sure you can look up Simcha Torah and see how OJs or other Jews perform this particular celebration and this particular evening festivity. Now, in the Orthodox and the conservative Jewish synagogues, each circuit is announced by a few melodious invocations that implore Hashem Baruch Hu to Hoshia, in the Hebrew, Hoshia Na. We say Hosha Na, Hosha Na, Hosha Na, which means save us, save us. And the root of Hosha is the same as we mentioned before, as in the name of the Moshiach, Yehoshua or Yeshua, called Jesus Christ in the English and the Western by Western Christians and Jesus Christos by the Eastern Orients and the Eastern Orthodox, such as the Ethiopians, coming from that Coptic, uh, that Coptic, uh, Greco-Coptic base. Now, the difference in Iusus or Iesus and Yeshua is that the Greek, the Greek does not have a syllabated sound, like the sh sound, like the Nugusu se or the she sound. Therefore, words like ho sha na have been effeminized to Hosanna or Hosanna. Even the S has been turned into a Z sound, which is strictly a product of, um, of the Gentile or Gentile Western pronunciation. But the name also of the Moshia has also been affected in the same way. So that's a little more a linguistic matter or issue, but some might wonder, well, how come these say Hosanna and these say Hoshana and we say Hosha'ina. Hosha means save, Na means us. So Hosha means save, Na means save us. So when the invocation Hosha'ina, Hosha'ina means save us, save us. So now, these melodious invocations that implore Hashem, or Jah, if you please, to save us, and they end with the refrain, or part of the call and response, which musically is known as the antiphony, like in the singing. The cantor sings one part, and the congregants or the chorus respond with the other part. The response is, I anenu anenu biyom koreinu anenu biyom koreinu. And what does that mean? Answer us. Answer us on the day that we call, or answer us on the day we call. Now, if you have been paying attention, you will recognize that this particular hoshaina actually is found and is related to the Psalms. I believe it's Psalm 118, and we will study that as we go forward. But continuing on the so-called Orthodox and Conservative Jewish, other Jewish congregations and how they celebrate the evening festivities, the Hakafot, which is the circuits, are accompanied by traditional chants, including biblical and liturgical verses and songs about or concerning the law and the Torah, the goodness of Yah, the messianic yearnings, the prayers for the restoration of the house of David. Now, this is very important to us as elect Rastafari and as faithful Ethiopian and Ethiopian Hebrews. 
in the issues and the topic concerning the restoration of the monarchy, the Davidic monarchy of Ethiopia, the house of David, and the temple, as well as the temple in Jerusalem. For us, it is New Jerusalem and the restoration and the building up of our African Zion for us. Now, congregations also may sing other popular songs during the dancing. Children are often given flags, sometimes candles and other sort of treats. The vigor of the dancing and the degree of festive merriment, it varies according to the congregational temperament. So some congregations and, and gatherings may be a little more reserved while others allow their joy to free flow and it takes on even a, a party or for us a kind of a rutical dance hall, a rutical dance or, or ayabingi kind of a flavor and a vibe. But this is the half of the story that we have not been told until now. So we have to bring this together to really build up on that foundation of the King of Kings and his Christ. Now, in Orthodox synagogues, the dancing is mainly carried out by men and boys, generally speaking among the Orthodox. Very young girls also um, may be sent in to dance on their father's shoulders. So the very young girls may also be dancing or carried on their father's shoulders. A woman and older girls often have their own particular dancing circles, especially for the sisterhoods. Or they might choose to look on from the other side of what is known as the petition or the mekutza, the mekutza, which is the petition in accordance with the rules of sinuit uh, or sinuit, which is modesty in the Hebrew. Now, in conservative and progressive congregations, men and women dance together. In some congregations, the orit or the Torah scrolls are carried out into the streets, and the dancing may continue far into the evening. After the hakafot, or the ciphers or circles, many congregations recite a portion of the last parsha or the last kufl, or the portion of the Torah readings, which is known as Wezot Ha Baraka or Vezot. The Ashkenazis pronounce it as Vezot, but the more proper biblical Hebrew would be Wezot Ha Baraka. Now, in Bamarinya, according to our Sabbath house readings, if you turn to page 7 of the Sabbath House readings, number 54, is called Ye Barakabat Baraketa Yichnat. And the Hebrew of that is Wezot Ha Baraka. And this, and this is the blessing. So in certain congregations would recite that particular last portion. This is the blessing in Deuteronomy and from Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 1 to chapter 34 verse 12. This part or the part that's often read 33 and 1 to 34 and 12 but it may vary according to the particular custom amongst those who are gathered in the Mikorab or the Beta Rastafari. Although Deuteronomy is never read to the end in the evening, there's a, there's a note on that particular point right there. Now, that's the evening services, but there's also what's known as the morning services. The morning service, like that of other Hebraic and Jewish holidays and holy days, it includes a special holiday amida or amida. Uh, the saying of the halal and the holiday musaf service. And these topics and, and issues we'll hope to address in their own turn. Now, when the ark, the tabot, 
is open to take out the Torah or the Orit for the Torah or the Orit reading, all the scrolls are again removed from the Ark, from the Tabot, and the congregation, the Machiber or the society of His Majesty, engage in the seven Hakafot once again, the seven ciphers or the seven circuits, and this is for the morning festivities. But there are early priestly blessings that we need to be reminded of as well. In many of the congregations, one deviation or difference from an otherwise ordinary holy day or holiday morning service is the performance of what is known as the priestly blessing as part of the shaharit service before the celebrations connected with the Torah reading begin, rather than as part of the Musaf service that follows. Now, this practice is said to harken back to an old custom for the Kiddush, or what we call the Kedase, the liturgy, sponsored by the Hatan Torah, to be held during the Simchat Torah service itself. Since the Bible prohibits Kohanim, descendants of Haron or Aaron, from performing the priestly blessing while intoxicated, and there is concern that the Kohanim or the priests may imbibe alcoholic beverages during the Simchat Torah festivities, the Baraket or Baraka blessing was moved to before the time when alcohol or the wine would be served. In some of the congregations, the Kohanim, they deliver their Baraket as usual during the Musaf service of Simchat Torah. Now, in some congregations, and this is a parenthesis right here, in the state of Israel, the Kohanim or the priests deliver their Baraket or Baraka at both the Shaharit and the Musaf services. Now, some of the congregations serve hard liquor along with other refreshments during the Simchat Torah dancing. Now, of course, there's the issue concerning Nazarites, but those who are not Nazarites or under such vows and are part of the regular mitmenon of the Ethiopian Hebrews may take and partake of that drink offering. Now, one other additional part on this we'd like to touch on, and this part is about Torah reading and customs. So please... Stay tuned, more to come, Yahweh willing. Shalom Rastafari.